Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I have with me a gentleman who's doing some interesting work with art and sustainability, and it's Paul Lockridge. Pronouncing that right? That's right, yes. Okay. Um, like we were saying, like Loch Ness Monster. Well, I without the monster, but yeah. <laughs> well, you've got little monsters you've made. They're very cute. Well, thank you. Recycled. It's just amazing work. But before we go into what you're doing now, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a product of the Bay Area. I've lived here my whole life. Um, I come from a large family, and uh, which influenced a lot of my work. Um, I have a daughter, and uh, I continue to do these things for fun and partial profit. So, are you a, were you an engineer before, or what did you do before you got into art? Actually, my career was as a graphic designer. Oh, okay. And I went from graphic design into event management. So, basically, focused around art which is a nice segue into what you're doing now. And we met at a car show in Saratoga, and I was very impressed with your work. Um, it's very, very fun. Tell us, tell us about the design and what you're doing and how you came up with what you're doing now. Well, it's kind of started with, uh, I, have this, I had this fascination with outer space, ray guns, robots, and rocket ships. <laughs> so the first piece that I actually made was a ray gun. I'd used an old drill body. And uh, at one time, I was kind of forced to get rid of some of my collection of toys. So I'd gone to a toy show. I took some of my homemade ray guns, and uh, lo and behold, I actually sold my custom pieces. And I thought, OK, there's, this, there's something to this. So uh, from there, I, I started making kind of characters. I did a lot of robots and things like that. And uh, I'm kind of a gearhead. So taking apart stuff, not necessarily putting it back together as a kid, kind of drove my fascination for this. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of a fun, and uh, it's fun, yeah. So were you into tooling with cars before when you say gearhead, or just tooling around with other stuff? Yeah, I was into bicycles, skateboards. I used to race motorcycles. Uh, I, I had several cars that I've worked on. So yeah, gearhead in that, in that respect. So let's bring up the first slide now and see some of the stuff that's on. Um, these are very cute. Tell me what these are. Uh, the one on the left is a, uh, well, the gold part is a, a vase, and it is a, it's a bug. It's the, the legs are windshield wiper arms, and uh, the one on the right is a dragonfly, and the thing is huge. It's, it's probably three and a half foot wingspan on it, so those are the kind of critters that I've made. All right, let's pull that down and pull up the next one, and it is... This is kind of a gang of robots. They're all made from vintage tins from um, Sir Walter Raleigh on the right there <coughs> to a Firestone patch kit from the 50s. So they're all kind of a smaller scale, but... And they're robots. Well, I mean, I call them robots. Okay. I mean, it's, they, they, they resemble that. Do but, they move? Um, in your imagination, they do. <laughs> they, they're poseable. This is one of your newer ones. Do you want to show us this here? Yeah, this, this, is, is, uh, this is an oil can monkey um, that I just made. And it's made from a, a vintage oil can, the little spout, oh, okay. so that's I his see. tail, and uh, his legs are actually outdoor spotlights, and you know, I wanted to make something, actually it was asked at the show where I saw you, someone had asked, do I make monkeys? So this is my first attempt at a monkey, but yeah, it's I brought him along. It's very cool, yeah, very, very cute. Um, so, so you got started because you like to teeter in things, you'd done some events, you, you had toys that you, that you got rid of and you wanted to play again with some toys then? Well, uh, there's a lot of it. it it's, it's, uh, I was involved with toys and collecting when I was younger, and I have a fascination with uh, fabrication. And as a designer and an artist, it's sort of they all came together. It's, there's, it's a very fun, creative process. When I work out in my shop, no one dictates what I do. I have fun. And the fact that I found that I could actually sell these things made it kind of a viable uh, activity that I continue to pursue. So how long have you been doing art now? Uh, I've been doing this for about six years. Six wow. years. Let's bring up uh, the next slide too. I think this is slide three. These I love, the little winged guy on the right. Well, the winged guy on the right, I call that air mail because <laughs> it's, uh, it's basically a brass mailbox that used to be mounted on the front of buildings. And if anybody remembered what an air mail stamp was, you'd pay three extra cents and it would go on an airplane. 
And little guy on the left, it started as a child's tin toy, and I call that mobile phone man because he's got some oh, wheels on him. So. You can see he's like a phone thing there. That's interesting. Yeah. If you pull that down. So when did you start this in six years ago or? Yeah, six years ago, I was working in the high tech field. I was uh, working at Hewlett Packard, and I was a project manager there, and a trade show manager, and a brand manager. So I was involved in the creative part. But along with you know 50,000 other people, I was uh, let go. So I pursued this. I had already been doing this, and I kind of went into it full time. So um, yeah, no, it, it it it's one of those things that's the people I meet, the activities that I'm involved with, the shows that I do. I'm meeting people like yourself, uh, it's, it's rewarding as an artist. Um, did you take metal classes then, how to, how to work with metal? or? I actually did take welding classes when I was in high school. I do know how to MIG, but stick. You have recently haven't taken any then, so in no, high school. No, no. In fact, my pieces uh, to the untrained eye, they are not welded. And oh. there's a, a technique called uh, cold assembly. So all my pieces are drilled and bolted. I don't use any glue, I don't use any soldering or welding. And the reason I do that is I like the complexity of the nuts and the bolts. I like to see that. So uh, with welding items together, you, you almost can weld anything to anything and you'd get a nice seam, but you don't get the complexity. I like the look of the exposed hardware. So that's kind of what I go for, and thus the name lock washer design. You know what a lock washer is? Sort of. Go ahead and explain it's, it. It's a, I... it's a split washer, and okay. you would actually put a bolt through it, and once you put a nut and tightened it down, it would put torque on the bolt so it wouldn't back off. It's kind of boring, but lock washer, lock ridge, it kind of stuck. Oh, okay, okay. Um, did you take any other art classes, or just, just I mean, because these are wonderful pieces. Oh, yeah, I was, uh, well, you know, in a big family, uh, it was I was thrown a pad of paper with my brothers and I, and it was like, you know, to keep us busy, some crayons and some paper. So I always drew. So I've always been artistic, and I can draw and paint and stuff like that. But this took it the next extension to. But no formal, like, classes in college? or I took a couple classes in uh, junior college, but I went to work from there, and I went into graphic design and got a job. And oh, right, the yeah. graphic, yeah. which is very artistic. Um, let's bring up another slide now. I think this is slide four, and these <laughs> are so adorable. Yeah, the, the one on the left is, I call them oil yeller, because it's an oil can. And um, yeah, for some reason, dogs really lend themselves to uh, the shapes work really well because the his tail, the one on the left, actually is the oil spout. Okay. The one on the right is an old camp flashlight with the battery oh, in the back. Okay, okay. So and that's the old yellow. Uh, oil yellow is on the old left hand yellow. side, okay. and the right hand side, I don't know what I called that one, but that's basically a camp flashlight. So his tail, the little yellow tail, would open up to expose where the batteries would go. But I've taken that out. And people can um, people can go to your website and or your Twitter uh, page. And they can uh, they can uh, look at the names there probably. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Flickr. If Flickr. you go to my Flickr, Flickr. screen, or Flickr. just type in lock washer, one word, and my stuff just pops up. And it up. just pops.